Alright, if you haven't kept up with the other Guys Not Dead movies, he's still okay, but let me recap for you. In the first one, it was about a college kid named Josh Whedon who uh, goes up against Hercules since his professor professes the profession of God being dead, and this kid's all like, nah. They debate, he uh, dies in a car accident. And God's still not dead, there's a teacher who quotes the Lord Christ Almighty who reigns in the heavens in order to make a point about a historical figure in class, and you know, she has all the right to do that, but... She ends up going to court. Even though it's about like freedom of speech and talking religion in schools, the court case ends up being about putting God on trial and whether he's dead or not. I mean, in the movie, they even show the kid who snitched on her also praying for her and giving her casserole at her house. I can't really explain that one, but with God's Not Dead 3. It, it, it's not God's Not Dead 3. It's God's it's Not God Dead. It's God's AR 3. <laughs> it's God's Not Dead. A light in darkness. 3. It's not three. Okay. Well, with the third installment of this franchise, could they make it better? Am I going crazy for thinking that this one is actually a solid rent it that actually improves on the last ones? Let me explain. So in this one, the pastor's church is getting rioted against because they want to kick it off of the college campus. And since they got a special effects budget for this one, a kid throws a brick inside of the church. It hits a pipe and it makes the church lit. But in the process, kills my man right here. He was like my favorite one too. How dare you not make this church fireproof? We then go back un memento like 12 hours earlier to see that there's this girl who's struggling with her faith and her boyfriend is struggling with his eyebrows, but he's also got a backstory of having beef with the church. So it turns out that he's the American vandal and the one responsible for my homie's death. Wakanda forever. Pastor bro goes up to Chicago to disrespect hot dogs with ketchup and also to ask his lawyer brother to help fight the administration in order for him to keep the building. What's cool about this duo right here is that this guy has left the faith years ago, but he's still here defending his little bro because he believes his rights matter. My man's crashing church mass to talk with judges so he can get the in. He's chopping down trees since these legal battles ain't nothing to him and he needs something else to do. He's chilling, eating zingers, drinking Sierra Nevada pale ales. Now this is where it gets interesting to me because at this point, right, this pastor for all the movies has been pretty level-headed, but pastor dude starts going insane. My man thinks he's Kendrick and that nobody's praying for him. He's getting into fights with his friend who's a part of the administration, so now he's up against them. He starts arguing with his brother who's helping him pro bono. He knocks the American Vandal out instead of forgiving him, and worst of all, he tosses a Bible. Now, you know I'm always straight with you, right? There are corny scenes in line in this movie, such as the line, Jesus was the original social justice warrior. They insert a bunch of random clips from news people yelling about other people yelling. And while the ending is cornier than ethanol, right? What they do with lighting up the world or whatever, I ain't gonna lie. I was still surprised with the route they went. Because there's a scene where Pastor Dude here decides to tell MLK Jr. 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 that he doesn't know what it's like to face adversity, and my man literally hits him with a, brother please. This dude then realizes that he's a part of the problem with all the yelling, that he doesn't need a church to do good and to just cause riots, and he gives it up so it can become a student center. He forgives the kid who did commit murder, and at the end decides to light a match and become a light in the darkness. Thank you guys for checking out this video. Like I said, I'm surprised that it was way better than the other two. Like, I'm not saying that it's a masterpiece, that it's the best of the year. I'm saying it's the best of the deck. No, I'm just kidding. I probably will be making another video, or my twin will be making another video in the other channel where you will probably be breaking down, like, the theological aspects of it because we've been covering these movies for a bit on the other channel. And, um, yeah, they actually listen to some things. Again, it's still cheesy. It's still, it's, it still has its moments, but, hey, they got better cameras and they actually, for the first time ever, were willing to take some blame for being bad Christians. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll send you my favorite Bible verse.